Riyadh Salahin. Chapter 64, Excellence of a Grateful Rich Man. Allah, the Exalted, says. As for the one who is charitable, mindful of Allah, and firmly believes in the finest reward, we will facilitate for them the way of ease. Surah 92 verse 5 to 7 But the righteous will be spared from it, who donate some of their wealth only to purify themselves, not in return for someone's favors, but seeking the pleasure of their Lord, the Most High. They will certainly be pleased. Surah 92 verse 17 to 21 To give charity publicly is good, but to give to the poor privately is better for you, and will absolve you of your sins. And Allah is all aware of what you do. Surah 2 verse 271 You will never achieve righteousness until you donate some of what you cherish. And whatever you give is certainly well known to Allah. Surah 3 verse 92 Ibn Masud, may Allah be pleased with him, reported, Messenger of Allah peace be upon him said, Envy is permitted only in two cases, a man whom Allah gives wealth, and he disposes of it rightfully, and a man to whom Allah gives knowledge which he applies and teaches it. Reported in Sahih al-Bukhari and Muslim. Commentary, this hadith has already been mentioned. Yet, its relevance with this chapter has prompted us to repeat it here. It lays emphasis on two points. First, if Allah gives wealth to a man, his sense of gratitude should be expressed in his spending it in good ways according to the divine command. Second, if Allah has endowed somebody with knowledge and wisdom, he should be thankful to his Lord by way of putting it into practice, and by imparting it to others. It means one can aspire for knowledge and richness, provided one's motive is to benefit others. Envy is a bad quality which Muslims must shun. In this hadith, however, envy, or gibta, refers to the feeling of wishing to have what somebody else has, or to be like somebody else without these blessings be taken away from the envied person. Ibn Umar, may Allah be pleased with him, reported, Messenger of Allah peace be upon him said, Envy is justified in regard to two types of persons only, a man whom Allah has given knowledge of the Quran, and so he recites it during the night and during the day, and a man whom Allah has given wealth and so he spends from it during the night and during the day. Reported in Sahih al-Bukhari and Muslim. Commentary, a hadith permit us to envy, in the positive sense of the word, see commentary on the previous hadith, only two traits of character of somebody. Grammatically, the texts of these ahadith imply both feminine and masculine genders. In the preceding hadith, the word knowledge has been used. It stands for the word of Allah. To apply and teach knowledge means to put into practice the teachings of the Quran. And that includes the recitation of the Quran, both in Salat and otherwise, imparting its teaching and passing judgments in its light. From this point of view both the ahadith convey the similar sense, and similarly we may also read into them two persons or two traits of character. Abu Huraira, may Allah be pleased with him, reported, some of the poor emigrants came to messenger of Allah peace be upon him and said to him, the wealthy have obtained all high ranks, and everlasting bliss. He asked, how is that? They replied, they offer salad as we do, and observe psalm, fasting, as we do, but they give in sadaka, charity, and we do not, and they emancipate slaves and we cannot. He peace be upon him said, Shall I not teach you something whereby you will catch up with those who have preceded you, and will get ahead of those who follow you, and no one will surpass you unless he does the same as you do? They said, Surely, O Messenger of Allah. He said, Say, Subhan Allah, and Allahu Akbar, and praise Him, by saying Alhamdulillah, thirty-three times at the end of every salad. They returned to Him and said, Our brothers, the possessors of wealth, having heard what we are doing, 
have started doing the same. Messenger of Allah peace be upon him said, This is grace of Allah which he gives to whom he wishes. Reported in Sahih al-Bukhari and Muslim. Commentary, the wording of the hadith apparently reveals that Subhan Allah glory be to Allah, Alhamdulillah praise be to Allah, and all who Akbar Allah is the greatest should be recited 33 times. If each group of words is said 11 times, the total number will become 33. But Al-Hafiz ibn Hajar believes that each formula should be uttered 33 times, that is to say, after each prayer Subhan Allah, Alhamdulillah and Allahu Akbar should be uttered 33 times each. But according to some ahadith, Imam al Nawa is of the view that Allahu Akbar should be said 34 times, and in the end La ilaha illallahu wa dahu, La sharika lahu, Lahul mulku, Wa alahul hamdu, Wa ahu wa alakul, Shayin Qadir, none has the right to be worshipped but Allah, He is one, He has no partners, to Him belongs the dominion, and all the praise, and He has power over all things, should be recited. Should we recite them together or separately? al qadi Iyad is of the opinion that it is better to recite them separately, but Imam al nawa is of the view that both ways are correct. In fact, in both ways the number remains the same. Besides, an addition must not be made to the Sunnah of Messenger of Allah peace be upon him. Practically we knew that it is necessary to use the prescription of a physician without making any alteration in its elements, otherwise, it will not work properly. Similarly, there are spiritual benefits, blessings, and efficacy in the number told by the Prophet peace be upon him. Any alteration in it will nullify its blessing and efficacy. This hadith reveals how fervently the companions were inclined towards good, and how concerned about surpassing those who were better than them in some forms of good deeds. Indeed, all Muslims are equal with regard to the practice of religious principles. But what gives an edge to the rich over their poor co-religionists are the financial forms of worship, that is, charity and almsgiving, which the latter are unable to do. Ya Habib, salam alayka.